amigos, ¿cómo están? Una nueva edición aquí en Cristina Radio Network Auto 060. Esta semana tenemos eh, dos debuts a los que fuimos a Nashville, a Tennessee, a los headquarters de la Nissan aquí en eh, Norteamérica para probar la nueva Nissan Rock 2014 y la nueva Nissan Pathfinder híbrida. Dos modelos eh, de los más populares de la Nissan y para eso tenemos un par de entrevistas allá. También vamos a hablar con una experta en, en finanzas personales y con el representante de General Motors eh, en las relaciones al consumidor para ver si este efectivamente el final de año es un buen tiempo para comprar un vehículo nuevo, aprovechar esas ofertas que tienen los dealerships también. Eh, vamos a tener una entrevista con Susana Urquijo, una ingeniera mexicana del grupo Chrysler que está trabajando en eh, Detroit y que recientemente recibió un premio muy importante. Y finalmente, eh, Kevin Corbick nos va a hablar de un programa que, eh, de reciclaje en el cual está utilizando los inner tubes, las cámaras de, de aire que van dentro de las uh, llantas, eh, sobre todo de vehículos grandes de, de trabajo industrial y los recicla para hacer backpacks, eh, empaques eh, para guardar el iPad y todo este tipo de cosas. Así que un esfuerzo muy interesante para otro aspecto de la, eh, aprovechar otro aspecto de la industria de los autos. Así que vamos a directamente hablar con Carla Beilo, eh, Senior Vice President de Diseño, perdón, de Desarrollo e Investigación de Nissan America sobre la Nissan Rock 2014. Well, uh, Carla, thank you very much for having us here in uh, Nashville, the headquarters for Nissan here in the Americas, and uh, for the new Rock, which is a very important car for you guys. It's uh, the second most sold car in Nissan. I didn't realize that. Absolutely. It's the second most popular car in a segment that's just exploding with uh, with volume. Yeah. And um, w it's not very old. I mean, it came out only, what, 2008, I think, uh, in the market? First generation, yes, was 2008. And uh, so it's... Obviously, been very, very popular in very short time. What what makes it so popular? It's a very versatile product. I think uh, for young families, especially those that need the cargo space, that need the ability to, you know, also keep the compact size. It, it makes a perfect, perfect vehicle. Yeah. Not only for younger families, but also for empty nesters. People are wanting to downsize, so we have to meet. meet The, the demands on both sides. Yeah, sometimes you guys are surprised when you plan a car for like third segment of the population and then you're surprised like, oh, the other people are buying it. It so. happens that way from time to time. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, the first car, I mean, you've been with Renault uh, since 1999, mm -hmm. but this is the first car that has truly combined both uh, efforts and resources from, uh, from both companies, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the first time we've, uh, we've had a common platform. Yeah. And that, 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 that speaks a lot to, to explain a little bit how complicated it is to produce a car, right? <laughs> Because well, people it, just like push a button, okay, turn on the radio, turn on the AC, and everything works. But it's not that easy well, from your end. Well, when you start studying element by element, yeah. you can see where the differences are. And as engineers, we have this not invented here syndrome. So you really have to, we had to put a special group together give them clear direction we wanted a common platform and then have them break down those natural biases that exist to really look for what is the best the, the best platform that we can offer both in terms of performance weight cost every aspect yeah and then now in a global world uh, this car is a global car right like it's, it's sold in what 190 countries I correct think? correct so that, that that's another challenge Well, obviously, but with the way we did the, the architecture for the CMF, it's a plug-and-play, common module family. The way we did it was it's a plug-and-play system. So depending on where the vehicle is being sold, you can substitute certain elements to get the performance right for that market. So it's like a Lego game or it's something It's like, like a that? Lego. That's the best way to describe it, fundamentally. All the, all the different parts can go together to get the, uh, the customer experience you want. Yeah, but in all seriousness, there's a lot of advanced technology in this vehicle, right? No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, spring from the engine. Can you speak a little bit about that? For example, the engine is one engine for here for the, for the U.S.? The engine is a 2.5 liter I-4. It's same as, as the previous generation, but we've improved it in terms of a compression ratio. And also uh, did some work, of course, for fuel economy and uh, emissions. Yeah. And, and then uh, people also are expecting a lot of things for cars for less price. So now you, you have put a lot of uh, connectivity, a lot of safety technology in these vehicles. Connectivity. Uh, you can do your apps. You know, there's an opportunity to do any, basically anything that you could do from your iPhone or your iPad. Of course, safely. That's the main thing. Also, we put an excellent cargo divider in the rear. 
that really makes the vehicle very flexible in, in the remaining cargo space. Yeah. Um, and this vehicle is built here uh, in, uh, in Tennessee, Smyrna. right? In Smyrna. Correct. Which is, is becoming very, very important. I mean, you, you build a lot of cars here, including the Leaf, I believe. Absolutely. We now have the Pathfinder, the Infinity uh, Q. We have uh, the Rogue. We'll, we'll have the Rogue, the Altima, the Leaf, all coming down, uh, you know, two lines. Yeah. Impressive because you didn't know about well, the, the plant has been here for a long time, but the headquarters moved here recent well, not recently, but a few years ago, right? Right, about uh, five, six years Something. ago. Yeah, yeah, but Smyrna has what 30 years? It, it's Smyrna's been, been in production for 30 years. Mainly, it started, of course, doing truck production and then Altima and, and other cars were added in. And in order to get the volume for the Rogue, we had to relocate the pickup uh, truck production, the Xterra and the Frontier, down to Canton. Oh, okay. So that was also, on top of the five launches, we had to move assembly to another plant wow, as well. That's, that's this has lot. been a busy year. Yeah, very busy. So very busy for the past uh, <laughs> few years, but like very busy for the near future too, right? I mean, you... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because uh, it, it's a tremendous challenge when you look at the volumes uh, that we're producing. Adding a third, a, a third shift to the assembly plant is is a big undertaking to keep control of that, maintain the quality. It's It requires consistent diligence, continuous improvement. Yeah, so for the people who the uh, next time they turn on the radio or point of the AC, remember there's a lot of hard work and engineering behind Heck everything. Heck of a right? lot of hard work in every element. I mean, we get, we have so many meetings even about, you know, how should we hold the cups in the cup holder? You have to think about every every element because this is you know the customers typically this is the second most expensive purchase yeah. or investment they're going to make it's a big deal we need to do it right excellent well congratulations and now we're going to go and drive it and see how it is thank yeah. you very much Carla. enjoy thanks thank you muy interesantes todos los detalles que nos compartió Carla Bailo, la Senior Vice President de Investigación y Desarrollo de Nissan sobre la nueva Nissan Rogue les invito a que vayan al canal de YouTube eh, Auto 060 en YouTube para que vean eh, eh, la vean en detalle Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.